Hey everybody, welcome back to Linux Cast. I'm your host Matt, and I'm Tyler. Hey, we remembered how to do it. We took a week off, and we remembered how to podcast. Uh, we'll see if that happens in January after two weeks off. I doubt it. It's definitely yeah, not no. going to happen. <laughs> it'll it'll have to be much more casual. Like right. you'll just be like, "Hey, I'm." Shit, Tyler. Hi. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, uh, what was your name again? I forgot who you were. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I went into multiple food comas. How are you? <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, do it. Do it. Oh, episode right after New Year's Eve. Like, oh yeah, we got drunk off our ass. Happy New Year, man. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So before we jump in, just a uh, a heads up on the schedule for how this the rest of this year is going to go. So we'll be here. Obviously, we're here this week. So you're hearing us. Uh, we, we're going to go the next two weeks. Next week, we're going to be talking about uh, paying for Linux, which should be fun. And the week after that, we're going to have something fun planned. We just don't know what yet. So uh, it's just going to be a whole bullshit episode where we just do no topics whatsoever. We're just going to we'll do something. We'll either play a trivia game or something. I have some thoughts anyways after that we're gonna be we'll be forced into having fun yeah it'll be terrible (laughs) it's gonna be uh, guess how guess what no it's gonna be guess which workspace so i'll put something on a workspace and then you have to guess which one's on (laughs) 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 that's horrible Uh, anyways uh we're uh, after that we'll be taking two weeks off for the holidays and then we'll come back january 6th uh, and uh we'll carry on through 2022 so that's the plan as of right now for how the rest of the year is going to go so i hope everybody who is in the united states had a fantastic thanksgiving and is staying safe in the craziness that is the world these days so uh we're gonna jump into our normal stuff and that leads me to ask hey tyler what have you done on linux this week and the answer would be of course nothing i installed windows you jackass <laughs> no that's not true i i did uh i have been trying out ubuntu um, uh mainline just pure ubuntu it's been nice but yes let's get to the topic that everyone wants to hear about yeah i'm using windows 11 and it's really nice it's like Boo! actually really good Boo! Um, yeah <laughs> Uh, no that being said it's really good if you're totally okay with microsoft spying on you and you know all that shit like yeah it's it's really good as long as you're okay with being um how do i put this politely yeah uh, yeah like you know (laughs) being used and abused by microsoft as long as you're okay with that it's great like that that's literally how the equation goes and on this laptop it's just weird and very niche, and Windows works on it, unfortunately. So, because I just want to be able to use the damn thing and, like, not have to fight with graphics issues, constant crashing, and weird shit like that, I'll be a Microsoft bitch for the time being. I don't even know you anymore. Like... It, it, is Linux too hard for you now? <laughs> like, 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 can't you do Linux anymore? Have you have you lost your ability to Linux? I, I don't even know. I, I'm speechless that you could do this to me. <laughs> like, it's a personal offense to me. <laughs> like, how how dare you use that proprietary garbage? What does Daddy DT say about that? <laughs> oh, uh, DT, I'm sure I'll get a personal email. Just it was, I'm sure DT, after seeing this podcast, will just send me a private email, which I'm not going to lie. He, we definitely have sent emails back and forth. I'll get one email, no subject at all. The message will be entirely, I'm disappointed. Like, <laughs> that'll be it. I find I, myself I disappointed in you. <laughs> <laughs> no son of mine will use that kind of voice. Classic. <laughs> ah, it's so good. <laughs> uh, uh, so, uh, unlike that douchebag over there, <laughs> I did not install Windows this week, but I had some other adventures, uh, which I don't remember actually remember what I was going to talk about. So I have to go to the actual show notes. All right. So uh, this actually happened last week, but we didn't do an episode last week. So I'm moved all of my stuff uh, from GitHub to GitLab. And I did that because SSH on GitHub is atrocious. It does, for whatever reason, I cannot get it to work. Uh, no matter what, like, 
I don't know why. It just doesn't work. So uh, I moved everything over to GitLab and SSH works. I'm beautifully. It's just literally the documentation for SSH on GitLab is like do this, 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 and this, and it works. On GitHub, it's like follow this link, do this, 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 and this. Go back to the original page, click on another link, do this, 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 and this. Go back to another link, do this, 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 and this. Like. What the hell am I doing? Installing Gentoo? I mean, <laughs> I mean, it was so fucking stupid. So I, I was just so much done with it. And I wanted to use SSH because I've been trying to get away from using Git Kraken as my you know method of interaction for Git because it's proprietary and it's a GUI and I like doing shit in the terminal. So I was like, well, I'm going to use the Git stuff in the terminal. In order to do that, I wanted to do to use SSH, so I've been doing that. So uh, that's what I was doing. That was a interesting experience. I'm going to look into figuring out how to mirror it so that it goes from GitLab to GitHub automatically. So apparently you can do that. Mm-hmm. And that way the people who have been following me on GitHub can still get the recent stuff, but I don't have to actually go through and upload any of the nonsense. That'd be cool. Um, I've also been uh, messing around with uh, doing better videos. So... <sighs> Let me tell you, folks, it doesn't matter how much money you spend on a webcam. It's still a fucking webcam. (laughs) That's Mm -hmm. the moral of the story is that webcams are just generally atrocious. Apparently, you can't get a good one. Uh, And even brand names like this is Aver Media, and it's supposedly really good. And uh, Tyler tells me I have to do color crash on it, but that's only going to help me when I'm actually recording in OBS, not through Discord. So that's whatever. Yeah, you have to use the proprietary software. On Windows. Kind of <laughs> so, hey, you want to? Maybe I could ship my webcam to you. You could use Windows to update the damn thing and send it back. <laughs> win, 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 win. <laughs> well, here's what a lot of people do, and this is Linux. Or Linus talked about it in his last Linux video. What you can do is install a VM, pass your your device into it, configure it using the proprietary software, and then pass it back out into the Linux environment. That is a shit way of fixing it, but it's a way of fixing it. I don't want to do that. Exactly. <laughs> I don't yeah. want. I don't want it. Well, yeah. all right. So what I'm thinking about doing is like i have a stand here and a clip that'll hold my phone and this phone has like a 4k 60 camera on the back of it Mm -hmm. (laughs) and i could use that right here the problem is is that the field of view on this thing is really really wide so not only is it going to catch all the way back to here but also all the way over to the other end of the room (laughs) it is like uh, well, you what you need to do is you need to record in, if you can go into the settings, instead of recording like 4K, because like editing 4K footage is kind of like a bitch. Oh, yeah, um, I would just record 1080p. That's fine, but that doesn't, it's still going to have the wide field of view because that's how the lens works. Now I could go through and zoom in, but then, you know, you're going to Well, that, that's and... what I'm saying. If you can, if you can record it 2K, record it 2K, and that way you can, you can crop in on yourself cut out that wide view and still stay at 1080p quality um the problem though is is if your phone's like mine you can't choose 2k it's oh it's like 1080p and then 4k that's like there's no in between yeah i don't i don't know what the iphone will do uh vizlo in the chat asked me what my github username was it's mtwb47 the number's 47 and uh on GitLab, it's the linux cast all right. As it should be. Yes. All right. So the only other thing I have to talk about is my keyboard. Uh, I broke my keyboard because I'm an idiot. Uh, and CoStar stabilizers are the worst thing man has ever invented. Outside of Windows, apparently. Um, <laughs> oh, you, all right. So you remember about four months ago or so, you did the podcast from a Macintosh. And I spent mm-hmm. the entire episode t- trolling you because you were on a Mac. Yeah, you thought that episode was bad, you bitch. <laughs> this is going to be bad, you Windows fanboy. Uh, anyways, <laughs> I broke my keyboard and, and CoStar stabilizers are, are terrible. Uh, See, go ahead. No, go, no, go ahead, go ahead. So I ordered a new keyboard and ended up spending way too much money because I'm a keyboard nerd. That's really the end of the story. Uh, KBD75, uh, uh, do it yourself, cook. Because I was going to have them just build it for me, but that was like... Four hundred and fifty dollars for them to build it for you. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, and uh, keyboard yeah. keyboards are an expensive fucking hobby to get into. Yeah, my worry is that it, I mean, this thing is coming from China, and with everything the way it's going like now, I'm probably going to get this probably sometime in 2023. I'm guessing. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm going to be stuck with these uh, these cherry blue switches, which sound like I'm crunching. They sound up. amazing. They sound horrific. I can't. I can't stand the sound. It, but it's not even the sound. Like, the sound is fine. But there's the the actuation force on these blues is just so much they hurt my fingers. I love I'm, blues. Man. I'm love so them. used to the reds, and it's just not as they're linear. Like it's just like the the reds are pra- like I th- I think they are a linear switch. Yeah, uh, yeah these are yeah. these, these yeah. ones here are, are clicky switches, and mm-hmm. there's a there's a I bump in there, uh-huh. and it's the actuation force is about twenty grams more, mm-hmm. and I can't stand it. It, it. Like literally, dude, I type. A hundred thousand dollars. A hundred thousand dollars. I type a hundred thousand <laughs> words a week. Like, I have to have a good keyboard. That's the reason why my keyboards don't last very long is because I type so damn much. So, anyways, uh, that's what I've been doing uh, this week or the last two weeks, I guess I suppose. Um, what were you gonna say? You were gonna say something. Yeah. Um, I keep getting a lot of people coming out and and saying so. Like, I love Windows now, and like I like I'm a Microsoft fanboy. I'm like, look. On this weird ass laptop, like it has a very weird config- hardware configuration. It's not that the hardware is very weird itself, but the configuration of it is very weird. This one use case, Windows shines. Like, give give Microsoft the One Plus. Like, they are shit in every other aspect. I th- let them get one win. All I right? think the problem is is that I, I've seen this and I've taken screenshots of it so that I can blackmail you later. <laughs> um, you have said, and these are direct quotes, that Microsoft Windows is good. Like, I have mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. photographic evidence. I also have a clip mm-hmm. of Terminal for Life saying the terminal is bad, so I'm just floating mm-hmm. the blackmail <laughs> material. <laughs> it's It's fantastic. It'd be like saying... Oh no, I can't say it out loud because then you'd have blackmail with you. I was gonna say workspaces are bad. <laughs> like, <laughs> like it's just these things don't, you know, they don't, they're not what you're supposed to hear. What is the world has gone upside down? Terminal for life is no longer. He's gonna be gooey for life from now on. I, you know, and you're gonna be the new Windows guy, going up against uh, what's what's his name from the Mac versus PC? You had Justin Long. What was the other guy's name? Um. Justin Long. From the commercials. You know what I'm talking about? Mm-mm. Probably before your time. <laughs> young window snapper. Did you get it? Young window snapper? Uh, <laughs> I heard it. I heard it. <laughs> All right. Uh, <laughs> He's just got to take a quick second to pat himself on the back there. He's <laughs> you, like, you, that was, that was tell, really good. you can tell we took a week off because I have no clue what we're doing. <laughs> <clears throat> Anyways, let's go ahead and move on into the contact information. If you want to get a hold of us, you can do so at uh, on Twitter. At the, I took a week off. I was doing so good, so well beforehand, and now I can't remember how to do the fucking contact information. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Anyways, uh, you can contact us on Twitter at LinuxCast. Uh, mostly, I just tweet about keyboards that are nowadays, apparently. <laughs> anyway, so you can subscribe to all of our audio feeds and stuff like that at the linuxcast.org. As is usual, I'll promise that that will eventually be its own website. I did think about working on that this week. I thought about it. I didn't actually do it. Uh, anyway, you can contact us via email at email at the linuxcast.org. You can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash linuxcast. I will thank all of our patrons at the end of the show. You can follow uh, Zany on Odyssey and YouTube. Now, we're going to pause here and have a celebration because someone in the last week has gone over a thousand subscribers. Like I'm, I, I would also like to say that I'm going to take full credit for this. This was obviously my doing. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it was. <laughs> you didn't do any work. That was all my doing. <laughs> uh-huh, uh-huh. <laughs> That's not, not true. He's worked you... very, very hard. Uh, and we're thankful for everybody who, who's what listened to the podcast. Who's gone over and subscribed to his stuff because we pushed him over. Like now he's approaching yep. like eleven hundred. Like the man mm-hmm. is gonna catch me before he knows it. It's gonna be fantastic. And then um, that that store, that store that he set up is just gonna blow up, and we're gonna be able to be millionaires. That's the way it's gonna work. Uh, you can follow the find the link to the store in the video description. He has awesome stuff there, so you should definitely check that out. Uh, and you can join both of our discords. We both have discords. I've been trying to pimp the discords a little bit more. 
Uh, those links will also be in the video description as well. I believe they're also in the live stream description. So if you need to, uh, if you want to go there now and if you're watching live, you can go to the, those things now and join now as well. Uh, we do record this live every Thursday around 3 o'clock Eastern time. As you can tell, we're just getting started. It's almost 4 o'clock. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. usually the way it goes. Mm-hmm. So uh, if, if we record it live on my channel, uh on Thursdays, sometime around three o'clock Eastern time, that's 2 p.m. Central time. What time it is in your area of the world, in your neck of the world? I can't talk worth a damn. <laughs> uh, if what is what time it is in your place of the world? I have no clue. I can't talk, let alone do math. What do you expect of me, people? <laughs> Anyways, finally, you can subscribe to uh, my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash Linuscast. And uh, Gooey for Life made it in the chat. Did you see this? I um, did. I saw that. <laughs> I'm, we're going to call him Gooey for Life now because I we have that blackmail. Terminals are bad. He even said so. It's right in his video. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, they're calling him Gooey for Life in the t- chat, too. Mm-hmm. That's great. <laughs> this thing is going to stick. I'm I'm telling you. All right. <laughs> All right. Anyways, so each and every week, Tyler and I scour the internet for news. Uh, the best news, only the best news will suffice for us. So, Tyler, what is your news of the week? Well, thank you, Matt. Thank, thank you for that great introduction for my news bit. Um, this For this fine little nugget of news, I went digging and uh, harvesting out in the wild and found something fantastic. DLS, DLSS, that thing that I can't say worth a damn, um, has come to Linux. It's, it's like a thing now. Like, so... If you have an NVIDIA card, which, like, let's be honest, sorry. Um, But, hey, if you have an NVIDIA card, most likely you can now take advantage of this. And, you know, if you don't have the most powerful NVIDIA card, you can still, like, run a game at, like, 720p, upscale to 1080, and get a hell of a performance gain uh, pretty much out of nowhere for free. All right, explain to me, because I'm a complete non-gamer. Mm-hmm. What is DLSS? What does it do? Does it make you play games better? I mean, somehow. No. What it does is it it will take a game. You can it you can think of it sort of like advanced upscaling, like technology. Essentially, you take a game and you run a game um, at a much lower resolution, and then DLSS DLSS is a technology that will essentially upscale it. And it does an incredible job of upscaling a game. So you can you can essentially get you can eke out more graphics, um, you know, quality um, at a lower resolution and upscale it to a higher resolution, your native resolution. And so essentially, you can take a game where if you wanted to run it at high at 1080p and it only run at 30 fps, you can run it at 720p and get 60 something like that out of it. Um, using DLSS because you're only running the game at 720p and then DLSS is upscaling it to 1080. I understood most of the words you said. Awesome. (laughs) Awesome. I I don't know what they mean, but when they put them together in sentences, but... Uh, you take you take a smaller resolution and then you you make it a bigger resolution uh, (laughs) and it's it's good at doing it. All right. So what you're saying is you... if you had a Mario from 1994 uh, and you, it was running at 420 P you could upscale that to, I don't know, 1080 P and it would look better. Mm -hmm. Uh, It, it wouldn't like the thing about DLS, when you upscale anything, you can't, it's hard to pull quality out of like where there is no like quality. And um, DLSS just does a really, really good job of, upscaling and pulling quality where essentially there is none um it's it's a very good algorithm for upscaling okay now does um amd have something similar to this you gotta i have no my traffic's cards at least seven years old so uh, yeah. you'll have to <laughs> yes technically amd does have a competing um technology however dlss is better it's objectively better especially now that 2.0 is out it's better. Um, but yes, AMD does have their own version of it. I think it's like Fidelity, Fidelity FX or something like that. Okay, so, and it's probably 
not as good because it's AMD, right? It's, it's, it's not that it's like just not good. It's just that it's not as good because, okay. I mean, it's NVIDIA compared to AMD. NVIDIA ha- like NVIDIA is printing money right now. Like that's, that's literally how NVIDIA, AMD technically to the same extent, but everyone is more focused on CUDA. And so right now, NVIDIA just has much more power in the marketplace. If, if NVIDIA is printing money, do you think that they, we could get them to send us some? I mean, if they if they got the Dude. printing press, then we could just send us some. And, and yeah, GUI for life. We did. Uh, you have been harangued into being a moderator in the chat. Congratulations. <laughs> I, did, like, I did not ask. I was like, yeah, this, I, I need a moderator. Uh, TFL is a good moderator. He can be. Yeah. I, I need to make some moderators for mine. I've been having some spammers come into my live streams. Uh, hopefully, we never have that problem here. Yeah, hopefully not. Um. I have had some trolls on the channel the last couple of days. There's one guy I had to block because uh, he was going after my mother. I was like, what? seriously? Like, leave my mother alone. All right. Before we move on to the next news, what <laughs> what is this idea amongst some of the people in the Linux community or the outside of the Linux community, I guess, that think that I live in my mother's basement? Like, okay, does this – I mean, you really can't really tell from the small shop, but this is not – a basement room, okay? <laughs> we don't have a basement, okay? <laughs> and I live near my mother, not with my mother, okay? Here's the surprising thing. Out here, like, most where, where I live, we have basements, but in most of the U.S., you don't, most people don't have basements. Like, most people don't even have them. Like, like he, the only thing reason we'd want a basement is for when the tornado decided to come, okay? And we, because we've seen that movie, okay? <laughs> so, I mean, it's just, like, I don't, I don't understand the stereotype of a Linux user has to be living in their mother's basement. You do realize that the, like, every server in the world runs Linux, right? For the vast majority of servers, they're running Linux. You're not going to call all those fuckers they're living in their mother's basement, are they? I mean, it's well, just... and also, like, that, that whole mindset, like, I don't listen to those kinds of people, because here's the thing. The person who is going to tell you that, they are perpetuating the idea that keeps them broke. Like, smart people save money and stay with their... Like, look, if you have a family that you get along together, you actually like your family, there is no reason for you to go out and spend a shitload of your money and, like, monetary resources on a house that's... It's not going to make you more money. It's only going to cost you money in the long term. And you're going to move out for no reason. Like, no, it's smarter to stay home. Like, My parents are reaching what? the age, like, they're getting closer to 90 than they are to, to any age under that. And they need help. So I stick mm-hmm. around, right? Like, yeah. <laughs> so I live next door. Congratulations. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. you know? And we, I still don't have a basement, okay? And I pay rent. And I pay my utilities. And I pay taxes. And I have a job that makes me plenty of money. Uh, you know? So I understand you're not supposed to let these people get to you. But it's just pissed me off. And, and uh, yeah. Anyways. So, anyways. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> moving on to my... Uh, let's see. I, I don't have... I opened up another tab here. Anyways. So... Um, let me go back to, uh, I got, uh, that's still the wrong scene, Matt, dumbass. Learn how to use OBS. <laughs> go back to your mother's basement. <laughs> uh, okay. Anyway, so my news of the week is that Canonical has been working to make uh, Ubuntu run better. Um, specifically Ubuntu VMs run better on Apple M1 Max. And I chose this story not necessarily because i find the technology all that interesting uh or the specific technology i should say but more because i think that those m1 max are going to be very very popular like the, a lot of people are going to buy these things right because they're really really good mm-hmm. but more than that arm processors are going to be the future like we're it, it's only going to be a matter of time before arm stuff comes to the desktop like it's gonna wait hold on hold on stop we're gonna have to have a disagreement here risk five should be the future okay if we keep I, saying I didn't, I didn't arm say is sh- gonna be the and it's say should arm should be the future i'm saying it is going to be i'm a realist tyler Damn all right <laughs> like, it, you're it, right you're right but i hate it like, you're it, right but i hate it <sighs> you should just be happy the arm is risk based okay it is so you should just be happy that it's based on an open source standard, all right? Uh, even if it's not open source itself, but it's fine. We're all going to be okay. 
Uh, <laughs> and I, I think that eventually we probably will be better off, but it's going to take a while because I think that eventually we're going to end up having like 14 or 20 or 30 different architectures that are going to be out there running and because we're going to have Apple stuff and it's all going to be locked to Apple's OS. We're, we're going to have Windows stuff and that's going to be locked to Windows because that's how they're going to optimize it. You know, we're going to have and Linux is going to have to kind of do its own thing or hack itself onto these other proprietary chipsets, which is basically what they're doing now with M1 and stuff, and they've done a really good job, like the the Asa High or whatever the hell how you ever hell pronounce that Linux that they're going through and putting on the M1. Um, you know, well that's that's kind of the problem, man. Like ARM is only going to make this problem of us. Linux is playing the catch up. Like Linux is having to support stuff that is getting made for Microsoft and Apple, and if now the the base architecture is going to be made by these same kinds of people and they're all going to want to make their own custom versions, that's bad news. Right? Yeah, well, I mean, we can hope at least, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a false hope, but we could hope that the one that's going to be made by Qualcomm for windows will be a little bit more open to being able to be, have other things installed on it. I don't think that that's going to be the case. I think that it's going to be able, like a lock boot bootloader, like on a phone. Because Qualcomm, yeah. make, Qualcomm makes all the phone chips and all the bootloaders are locked. Like, we know this. It, it's happened. You know, it's yep. done. We've been living with that experience for the last 10 years, you know. And uh, it, the future, as cool as I think ARM technology is, I mean, can you imagine being able to have an, uh, a very powerful processor that has 150 cores in your computer? You know, <laughs> with yeah, and all, and all those cores, like even the like, there's only like 24 of them that are high efficiency, and still, like even under full load, it only draws like maybe 65 watts. Yeah, and like maybe you you have one of the, all all you have is like one of those minuscule like 10 millimeter fans, and it never runs. You know, <laughs> it's yeah. cool, right? It's it's cool technology. That's why everybody's going crazy about the M1s, right? It's it's neat and the unified memory and stuff like that, so that you don't have to deal with, you know, speeds across the bus and everything like that. It's it's a neat technology, and it's going to be the future. But it, for for me, for Linux, it scares the shit out of me because mm -hmm. it any future Linux has on that type of hardware is going to be by definition kind of hacky. Well, know? yeah, cuz they don't like there's no one inside of the Linux space right now that I know of that could even hope to afford to R&D the work to develop one of these chips for themselves. Yeah. And then everyone in the Linux space develop for it. Like the the saving grace though might be servers because they're putting this stuff in they're creating ARM chips specifically for servers. And we know that Linux runs on servers. So it's possible that the work will go into work, get Linux running on servers and stuff, and then maybe the desktop stuff will follow. Hopefully it will follow. And then those chips and stuff like that, because those chips have historically trickled down into the technology used in desktop computers. right? No. We're, we're not going to have a thousand core CPU in our desktop computer. But eventually, that type of technology and that type of miniaturization will trickle down into the consumer market. And hopefully, the work that has been done to get Linux running on servers that run ARM in the data center will also trickle down into, you know, uh, the, the desktop consumer market. Whether I mean, that's why I think that things like the Raspberry Pi are so important because if we can get like Ubuntu. And Arch and Manjaro and all this stuff running really well on the Raspberry Pi, which is literally a piece of paper. <laughs> I mean, mm -hmm. if we can get it running well on that, then it doesn't matter what chips we do end up with later on. Because we're going to have the software already made for the small-ass computer. And anything bigger than that is going to be perfectly fine. Because it's, yeah, it'll it's, scale well. Yeah, I mean, so, that's kind of the beauty of Linux. It will scale yeah. beautifully. So. Um, so, I mean, I find some hope. Uh, but anyways, I know that this news story here uh, didn't get really talked about. So uh, yeah, we kind of grazed over it. <laughs> but basically, what it is is Ubuntu's trying to make it so that Ubuntu runs better in VMs on the M1s. Now, really, what they're doing is Apple when they introduced the M1s, they came out with the new virtualization technology, and it's supposedly really good. But it's kind of similar to what the, they're doing with the Rosetta, but it's for 
VMs, mm-hmm. right? And Ubuntu is trying to get their operating system run better than that. Um, it'll be interesting to see how that work then kind of uh, goes into getting it to run on actual hardware on the M1s. Because right now, I believe that got the, the team who's doing that M1 Linux has gotten Debian and Arch working. I don't think that they've done Ubuntu. I could be wrong on that. Um, but I don't know. It doesn't, I mean, it's interesting for me because it's just interesting technology, but it's not a piece of technology that I'm going to ever be able to afford. Like, yeah. <laughs> I could I could never justify spending $2,000 on a laptop. I could buy three computers for that. Yeah, <laughs> you no, know? I'll pass. I'll pass. <laughs> like, 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 that's the reason why eBay exists. Like, I, I, buy, <laughs> I, I buy an old Dell like, Optiplex thing. That has a i5 from 11 years ago, and that will run for me for another next 10 years. That's the way I get my computers, uh, unless unless it's the computer I run on, and then I you know build it myself. But whatever. Anyways, uh, that's the news. So let's go ahead and move on to the main topic. We're only 34 minutes in. That's uh, kind of impressive. Yeah, uh, it's a little impressive. It is. It really is. Even as even as much as I bullshitted about things to the Same whole thing. Here. Um, anyway, so the, the, the main topic this week is I want to talk about things that Linux could do better. So my thought on this is that I, I made a video yesterday saying Linux is not perfect. Like there's a, there's a small group of people in the Linux community that think that Linux is uh, this They've set it on a pedestal, and if you criticize it, you're a bad person, right? So that was the whole point of that video. But I don't want to really talk about that. I just want to... I want to talk about a few things that we think that Linux could do better. So I'm going to, as usual, force you to go first. So why don't, okay. you, why don't we go back and forth? You do, do you tell tell me one thing you think Linux could do better? Uh, hardware support on for weird setups. Um, we all know Linux doesn't get new hardware support right out of the gate, um, which I think is a given. Like you're, it, it's a free operating system. There's not really money driven behind it. Profit margins aren't really a thing when it comes to the Linux kernel. That's not really what they're concerned with. So to me, like the fact that it doesn't have new hardware support is not surprising. Um, But getting Linux to work on weird hardware configurations or setups, that's something that does definitely need to be addressed eventually. Yeah, it's... It would be nice if we could, if Linux could become popular enough where the actual, like, manufacturers of the hardware would contribute to, uh, like, the kernel. Now, some of them do, like Lenovo and Dell, they do, uh, Intel does, uh, but it doesn't ever seem like it's that much of a, you know, priority for them. So, it'd be nice no. to, if it became more of a priority for them, because then that, work would speed up a lot fast, especially, uh, fuck you, NVIDIA, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> if, if Dude, we could get in, in... <laughs> no, finish that statement. Cause I'm like, about to agree with it. Like if, if we could get NVIDIA on board, like even, if, you know, at this point, I don't care if it's open source, but if we could just get them to actually make things good, good, then it, it, it'd make everybody happy. Like, sure. We'd wish it was open source, but at least it would work well. Dude, just all, all all we ask is that you care. Like that's it. Uh, just it, care. No, 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 no. Not even care like a lot. <laughs> like like yeah, you don't no, you don't just, just you some, don't have like, to change your logo to include tux in it. We don't. It doesn't have to be I heart tux all the time. Just a, a little. Like <laughs> like can can we please not be ten years behind constantly yeah. from the Windows stuff? Could, right? Could you like I don't know update the Nvidia like settings? look from 1997 like the year i was born could you please do that like, like that would be nice literally any attention at all would be good <laughs> like, like just a, just a little bit okay and preferably i mean they do pay some attention obviously but it always feels like an afterthought like, mm-hmm. like there's like there's a, that one asshole at nvidia like oh yeah we probably should do something for linux yeah. If we like, have to, yeah. Like <laughs> there, there's that one guy who's like in the back where they're talking about all these nice features and everything. He's like, you know, we kind of have to give something to them. And they're like, oh shit! And they're like, throw 
throw Todd a bone over there in the corner. <laughs> like, no, no, that's exactly what it is. There's that one Linux nerd at NVIDIA who's the only <laughs> reason there's any Linux support at all. And every, every meeting is like, please, 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 can we do something for Linux? Please, please. Like, uh, like literally, can we just spend some money on Linux? We really want to do it. Like, come on. Like, anything. And, that, and then there's just, like, there's just one exec who's like, did someone accidentally unmute Todd? in the corner <laughs> like like like, like, like they, they mute him like there's that guy in his mom's basement again <laughs> uh, all right so uh my first one my, my first one is uh audio like i i feel like we do this all the time but linux could do audio better uh and Everybody keeps coming to me and telling me, like, Pipewire's the future. Just like they keep saying, Wayland's the future. Like, sure, okay, but I don't live in the future. <laughs> like, like mm -hmm. I want, I've always wanted to live in the future, but I don't live in the future. So, the problem is, right now, Linux audio is kind of bad, and it's actually gotten worse. Like, it was doing okay there for a while, mm -hmm. but now that they've introduced Pipewire... Shit, it's listen. actually worse. Like it's like, worse now because we've made it fragmented and things don't work together. And uh, it, well, and it, now you have people are confused because Pipewire uses some of Pulse's shit. Yeah. Like for for me, like when I was using Pipewire on on Bun on Solus Bungie, I was having to use uh, PACTL to load a module for Pipewire, which is like, wait, what? Like, huh? Am I using Pulse Audio or am I using Pipewire? Which one am I using? Um, well, it just gets yeah, pu 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 pipe wire sits on top of Pulse Audio, which sits on top of Alsa, which sits on top of another thing. Like literally, this is literally uh, you have a fence, and you, instead of going through and taking the old paint off, you were just painting over it yeah. every three years. That's what we're doing. Yeah. Like, and, it, and it's no wonder it looks like shit. Yeah, like, it, 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 like there's spotches of pink there where, you know, it used to be a pink fence. Now it's a white fence, but you can still see the pink underneath because you forgot the primer, you know. Shit, at different at different points, there was mold growing on that fence. And we just painted right over it. Like, it's fine. It's like, you, you can see the dog piss stains at the bottom. You know? you know? so, I, I mean, the, the promise of pipe wire was that it was going to be a replacement for Pulse Audio. It was going to be the new thing. Right, it, the same thing with Wayland. Wayland is going to replace Xor, and maybe that is the future. Maybe ten years from now, everybody will be using Wayland. I don't think it's going to take that long for everybody to use Wayland because we we have. A, a, am I blowing out a little bit? Um, no, no. Well, I mean, you seem fine for me. Uh, TFL said Matt's really testing his pop filters. <laughs> I apologize for that if I'm shouting a little <laughs> too too loud in the, into the microphone. But but anyways, you know, may, maybe ten years from now, everybody's going to use. Wayland and Pipewire, and and we're we're I don't think it's gonna take that long because like we have Ubuntu and we have, you know Fedora or whatever they're already using it as default. It, it it's there and it quote unquote works, but the problem is it's very much in development. Like that's the thing with something that with like Xorg, Xorg gets an update once every I don't know five years, maybe, <laughs> you know, and usually it's just security stuff because Xorg's been around since nineteen. 19- like 50 or something. It's been around forever. Uh, mm -hmm. And it, it's stable because it gets no new features and it's all it's, they're doing is going through and, uh, you know, making sure that it doesn't suck. Break worse, itself. Right. Yeah. That, right. That's <laughs> all it does. Break itself. <laughs> the problem with, with Pipeware and Wayland is that they're actively adding new features. So when they go through and add a new feature that doesn't look like your particular brand of hardware or my particular brand of hardware, shit goes wrong. And when you're talking about an email client, if you break my email client, you know, fine, whatever. It's an email client. Who gives a crap? Mm. But when you break the thing that sends audio to my headphones or a picture to my screen, like literally. It's a kind of a major problem. It's a big deal. It's be like <laughs> breaking the steering wheel or the tires on your car. You know, mm -hmm. break the cup holder. I don't care. Break the steering wheel of the tires. I can't like, go anywhere. It's like handing you a cell phone with no speakers or microphones on it. Right. It's just, like, like, what? So, so I, I kind of got away from my thing. Like, they can do audio better. If the problem with Pipewire is that it sits on top of all this other stuff, it doesn't work half the time. 
if we were going to start over again, why the hell didn't they just start over again? Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know. It, it's, it's a mess. Now, for the most part, audio sometimes, for the most part, works fine. Like Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> but it, it's too inconsistent. It's one of those things that just has to work, and it doesn't always work. So audio yeah. is definitely and, one of those things. And that's kind of the problem. It's like when you bitch and complain about audio on Linux, there are those people out there who have never experienced an issue ever. Like right. ever. And they can't understand someone who does. The person who does experience an issue uh, like with audio on Linux, they truly un- – like it's not a simple fix. It's a constant struggle to get it right. Yeah. Like, there, there was somebody in the chat and I'm pretty sure he was trolling us, but he said Pipewire is awesome. Um, and <laughs> Glowsec just said go Wayland, you know. <laughs> so I'm also sure that is a troll. But the thing is there are people as well. They're like they 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 use Pipewire. They use Wayland. And it works fine for them because they don't do you anything esoteric. They don't record videos. They don't go through any, any of that stuff. They don't don't have, mess with echo cancellation. Don't, it, they, they don't do all that shit. They don't have an audio interface for their four hundred dollar microphone. You know, you know that they have to get working. So the the for for normal people, Pipewire is probably perfectly fine. It works fine for them, and they're they're, they're listening to this podcast like, what are you talking about? Audio works just f- fantastically. And then I was like, well, hey. Have you ever cooked, hooked up a Bluetooth headset to your Linux machine before? Oh, yeah. When you're have using fun. Pipewire, have like, like have a good time. You know, it's 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 it's. I mean, it it can be done, uh, mm-hmm. but it takes some work. And the problem with audio is it's one of those things that has got to be simple. It, it yeah. has no. Well, it it has to just work. Like it has to. Yeah. It, and if it doesn't. New users who are trying to experience Linux for the first time are going to, I mean, the number one thing. All right. So picture this. You're a new user. You just switched away from Windows 11 because it's God awful. And despite what that idiot across from me says, Windows is terrible and you should have switched to Linux. Um, <laughs> yeah, I had to get that in there. Anyways, mm-hmm. you, so you switched to Linux. You managed to go through, and you you got the ISO. You chose the distro. You got it onto a USB stick. You got it into a you you got it onto your hard drive. You got it booted up, and you're you're picturing that glorious pink and purple butt cheek that is the LTS <laughs> release of Ubuntu. You you're there. You have begun your Linux journey. You get out your two hundred and fifty dollar pair of Bose headphones because you got them for Christmas or you got them for your birthday, and you're like, "I'm gonna listen to a YouTube video, and I'm gonna connect these things just like I would in Windows, and it doesn't work." Chances are, unless you're an Uber nerd and you're willing to put in some effort, you're gonna fly back to Windows because things work in Windows. Now, I'm that's not saying that shit doesn't go wrong in Windows. Like, Bluetooth, my experience with Bluetooth and Windows is kind of bad, too. But at least it connects, you know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so, that's, that's, it's those types of things that are going to send new users packing back to Windows. Uh, they don't care if they have to restart their computer. They've been doing that for years, you know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, you know? Trust me, a restart on Windows means nothing. That's... Right. So, so if anything... They were probably expecting and being prepared for big problems, things like, you know, a kernel panic or something. They were probably, you know, prepared for something like that. But if the simple things, like, if you can't get audio right, what can you get right? Exactly, yeah. (laughs) Like, if you can't do this... I mean, that's kind of the thing. I don't think a lot of hardcore Linux users understand, like, for a new person who comes over, like, dog... If they go in and a YouTube video doesn't play right, like instantly they're they're gonna be like, um, how does pe- how do people even use this? Like right. well, it's it, it's just sound. Like how is this not properly set well, up? Like we've had headphones for longer than we've had computers, mm-hmm. okay? <laughs> like like legitimately go 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 out and try and convince somebody that was going to purchase a new car and like you let let's say you go out to the dealership and you hop into a brand new car and the guy who's selling you the car and like look you can barely afford it but you're like I I can do it. I really want it. 
but then he hops in and he tells you, yeah, the audio, like the, the audio in here, it does work, but you have to do some setup. Like you need to, you need to get it like under the hood and connect two wires like, and it'll work perfectly. In order for, like, in order for the car, the, the stereo to work, you have to rub in your head and pat your stomach at the same time and yeah. also drive. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like, like you, if you're, if you're spending that much money and everything, like I mean, if you think about it, if you're telling someone that Linux is great and everything, Linux might be great. That car is probably awesome. But the fact that they have to get out and plug in two wires, like that should be basic when you were building it, that that scares, like that would scare the shit out of you. You wouldn't spend a shitload of your money on a car well, that be, they couldn't even plug in the cords right. You'd be Come wondering on. what else they got wrong. This thing definitely doesn't have brakes. Okay. You know? Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean... Even even let's get past the initial thing. Like, let's say you manage to get those those headphones set up and connected, and they're working fine. What happens when you restart your computer and you and you get back in and, and Pulse Audio, as Pulse Audio does, has changed your default input to your speakers or whatever else you have? And this thing. I'm gonna that- be honest. People will make excuses. That is the most annoying shit in the world and it happens all the fucking time like literally time. three times a week it, it happens like i don't know about you but it pisses me off when people make excuses for it i'm yeah. like like that shouldn't be something like people tell you like it's just something you got to live with like that shouldn't be something no, that no, you no, just have to live with how hard is it to save the uuid or whatever the hell they call the, the identifier of whatever you have connected to a file Linux has a shitload of configuration files. Save the thing that was last connected to that configuration file and have Pulse Audio loaded up. It's not rocket science. If I'm a dumbass, I can do it. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the, the the thing is, is this experience like you've gone through? You've succeeded in u- using Linux for a week or so. Let's just say, all right, you've done this, and y- you know you you found alternatives to your applications. Your your Bose headphones are working fine, but then you do that update and you have to restart your computer. And, it, and Pulse Audio does what it does. Chances are you're going to think the problem is much bigger than what you than what it actually is. So you're going to spend hours upon hours scouring the Google to mm-hmm. find a problem when all you really need to do was go into PACU controller, whatever it's called, and change the default uh, output back to where it should be. Here's how true your, here's how true that statement is. As an experienced user, every single time Pulse Audio does that shit, I immediately go, oh, this is going to be a big problem. Like, even though I know it's probably just, I just got to change the default. It happens all the time. I know Pulse Audio and I know it can be a much bigger ordeal. And I mean, I've, I've had the, I don't know if you have this issue, but for, for me on certain machines, if I have a, blue snowball plugged in or um, a blue microphone plugged in and I turn it on with it plugged in like as it boots that's the only device that's detected by the system for some reason because it ha- it has both an input and output in it like it has like you can plug your headphones into it so it has an output and it's yeah. also an input device and Linux doesn't know what the hell to do with that thing <laughs> like, well see <laughs> the thing that pisses me off about it is like it Linux will just act like the internal motherboards like sound device just doesn't exist like why (laughs) what nobody can answer Uh, it's obvious that nobody can answer that question because they haven't fixed that's Mm -hmm. that's the first the 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 thing about it tyler is that we've been linuxing now for 30 years like almost my entire life i'm 30 However old I am, I don't even know. It, it, it's <laughs> it, it's too it's too many to count. All I know is I'm older than Gooey for life, um, and I'm way older than you. You're like a youngin. For almost my entire life, we've been Linuxing. Like Linux in 1991, it was six years after I was born. And in all that time, we haven't been able to figure out the one thing that should work. It mm-hmm. it, it 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 it's mind boggling. And it, look. Everybody's saying, well, you're being really hard on Linux. How dare you? I mean, how dare you criticize Linux to such a extent? It sounds like you hate Linux. No, 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 no. This is me loving on Linux really roughly because I want it to get better. Like, we we have to have these conversations. Otherwise, it's going to continue on. Like, 
there are people working on this. There have there there are people in the Linux kernel and the Linux community ten million times smarter than I will ever be. And we know that. We all know that I'm a fucking there some, idiot. Right? There are some very, very talented people in the Linux right? team. Like, there's a reason why Linux exists and is awesome as it is. Right? They, these guys are really super smart. So I, I, I want to have hope that they can fix this, but it's been 30 years. You know? If, well, and, it's, it's clear that their focus is elsewhere. Right. And I think it's it's most likely because the people who need to develop stuff, the people who have, the people who have the skills necessary to develop and make audio fantastic on Linux, are also the people who their talents are needed and used on, in the server space. Yes, because that's where everything has to be focuses on in the mm. servers. That's that's disappointingly right. Yes. Yeah. Uh, okay. Like <laughs> we spent a long time on audio, so let's go ahead and let's see if let's see if we can go through and manage to do three each. So your second one. Um. My my second one that Linux could definitely get better is um, browsers, and what I mean by browsers is inside of the Linux space, Linux is the perfect community to come out with a new web engine. A new true web browser that is based off of a new web engine is definitely needed. Firefox is shitting the fucking bed and all we have is Chrome to compete. If you want to tell me about another browser, I'm going to go ahead and stop it. Stop. Just stop. It's not It's not a real competitor or two. It's a Firefox or Chrome reskin. That's it. Don't well, technically Safari is there, but that's only on the phone. I mean, that's it's yeah. not a real competitor. It's an Apple product. It's not a real competitor. It's not. They have like twenty percent. They have like twenty percent of the browser. Plus, well, technically, no. Blink is blank based on WebKit. So, look, like, l let's be honest. If you if you were using I'm something other than a Mac, would you use Safari? I wouldn't use Safari on a Mac. What are you talking exactly. about? Exactly. <laughs> that, that, that's my whole... No one I know who uses a Mac uses Safari. It's not a real competitor. No. I do use Safari on my iPhone in conjunction with Brave and Firefox and like Edge. I have like four browsers on here. And the reason why is because I have Firefox on my computer. So I, in order to get stuff from Firefox to my phone, I have to have Firefox on here. So... And... It doesn't matter that the phone lets you set a default browser now. Half the time, shit still opens up in Safari, so I use Safari for that reason. And I had Brave on here because I was using Brave for a while. Um, browsers are a fucking mess, man. I'm telling you. Uh, I, I I was legitimately waiting for how you were going to explain to me like how, how like I need four browsers in my life. I'm like, Jesus, man. <laughs> it's not that I want four browsers, Tyler. It it. Here's the thing. Okay, so I was talking about how I bought a keyboard right the kbd fans mm -hmm. website doesn't work in firefox it just doesn't work i mean you can load it and stuff like that but it's broken uh so i had to install brave in order to get it to work uh because it's chromium based they they obviously developed their website for chromium mm -hmm. and the thing is mm -hmm. this is happening more and more often like everybody mm -hmm. tells me i'm crazy like oh i've never had this experience no, on you're... firefox at all you are not crazy, man. <laughs> Firefox is shitting the bed. Like it, and it, it, it's just, I don't it, think people understand this. Everything is Firefox and Chromium. Like yeah. everything. Like, it, the it, thing the thing about I mean, we bitch about Firefox about every other episode. The thing yeah. about Firefox is it's getting worse. Like it, it, the thing about it's just it's getting worse. Like like even if it was just staying at a, a relatively level, you know, a bad. Like if it just stayed this bad, like forever, mm -hmm. fine. You know, I can deal with it. I'll, I'll come across the occasional website that I can't use. I have to go install Brave or something, and then I can install uninstall Brave and go back to using Firefox. The but the problem is is that at least twice a week I come across some <laughs> website that I can't use. Because they're not, now, it's not really Firefox's fault. It's just that they are so unimportant in the grand scheme of things that web developers don't test their stuff on Firefox anymore. Um, mm -hmm. Now, whether or not that's laziness or not, I, I, we could argue about that. But it's it's definitely an issue. So you're exactly right. The, the Linux community definitely does need to pull together their resources, collect their pennies, and find someone to get us a new web engine. But I don't think I think I think it's too late. 
I, I, I think it's, too, I mean, remember, here's the damn realist in me again, but I think it's too late. I think it's a Chrome world and we're just going to have to live with it. Um, no, uh, seeing that, like that, like that defeatist mindset. Yeah. No, no, I, I know it, you're the optimist of, of the, of this couple pairing here, Tyler, but I, I, I can't live with your optimism. You're just going to have to go back to your windows. Look, play all, <laughs> all, all it takes is the people who do know how, how to like code like a, a web engine to get as pissed off as you are. And like, if we're being honest, it's kind of hard not to be pissed off. Like I'm using edge right now and loving it. Why? Well, because it's literally just Chromium. It, it's, I, w- I would love, I want to see you get the crap I got, not only from the community, but from you, Mr. Tyler, you made fun mm-hmm. of me when I switched to edge, mm-hmm. like you did. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, the thing is, well, just, partially because I know also you don't use a Microsoft account, so like, why? Like, hell no, like, I don't. Fuck. No. That, yeah, exactly. Like, I, like, I have like, one, but I'm pretty sure it's a Hotmail account from like 1995. You know. Uh. So the the thing the thing about Edge is though that's getting worse too. Like you haven't been using it long enough to experience what it was like before, but right now it is a bloated piece of shit. Because mm-hmm. they keep adding things. They, they, the, the, the coupon extension was really cool. I was like, oh, this is built in? That's awesome. I'm going to install this on every browser I have now because getting coupon codes automatically when you're sh- shopping, really cool. Uh, but I, it needs to be an extension, but it's built in on Edge. Now they have Shop Now, Pay Later in Edge. It's not in the Linux version yet, but on Windows, it's there. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they have all these little features that should be extensions, and it's going to continue. They're going to continue adding these features and stuff and it's kind of it's already bloated as fuck yeah um so. well like that's not even the point like see this is the problem in the linux space we can waste so much damn time talking about browsers and choices that browsers are making when that's a waste of time yeah because the real problem is the fact we are arguing about which chromium skin we like and which <laughs> Which decisions that the Chromium skin makers are choosing, and, and like, whether or not Vivaldi is open source, you know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, day, Vivaldi is like, look, I'm gonna be completely real. If you're a Vivaldi like lover and everything, let me be completely. They're stupid. They're like read their documentation. It is stupid. Read their blog posts. Stupid. They're very much hypocritical, and also the browser sucks. Go, like, don't need an email client in my browser. Take take a break for like <laughs> one month and then go back to Vivaldi as like a complete new user and try signing up and everything. It's confusing as shit. You're like, what the hell is going on? I just want a browser. It's no, no Vivaldi is not a browser at all. I don't. It's a it's a suite. It, it's like, it's that's, office, what, that's what it is. It's, it's office suite is what it is. <laughs> yeah. Just have, yeah. dude, it's literally Emacs. Okay, I'm just. <laughs> It's it's like the modern web's version of Emacs and a disgusting version of that. Like it's all it's all written in JavaScript, okay? So instead of Lisp, it's JavaScript and the, the people can argue, well, it's just a JavaScript re- render. Well, what, what do they say about Emacs? Well, it's just a Lisp interpreter. You know, it's mm-hmm. literally exactly the same thing, just a different language, you know? <laughs> so mm-hmm. actually I'm pretty sure Vivaldi's probably written in C in in JavaScript, but still the the, the point remains. <laughs> to die German so, man guy says I love Vivaldi <laughs> there's always that one guy guy all right anyways all right, my next one uh is going to be painful to say because Linux mm-hmm. could do a better job of having a default desktop environment uh and the problem is is we can't decide on which one's the best one we can't decide as a Linux community that just we just need to admit that KDE is the best um that's and, kind of like saying which distro is the best. I know, but. I know, but yeah. All right, so in that Linus Tech Tips thing, what was the one of the first thing he says? Well, the first thing you you, you had to suffer through is trying to figure out which distro to use, and mm-hmm. that's not even the problem. That's that's only half the problem. The other half is figuring out which desktop environment you use, and that's really the problem, because ever. Not only do you have to choose what distro you have to use, but then you have to figure out which ISO to use that has the specific... De- really, what I'm hearing right now is we have a lot of people who are not giving good advice. Okay? That's true. We have a lot of shitty fucking articles out there that are misleading and are terrible. And we have people that are giving terrible advice that are highly opinionated and biased. Well, Look, we, all right, so we find know, your Linux system. Like, just know, find a Linux distro that looks nice. And right, go with we it. We know Try it. that the SEO of Google has made it so that people 
give out shit advice and make listicles and stuff and it, it happens and it, that's a thing to fix but that's not a linux problem that's a google yeah. problem okay my thing is and this is never going to happen this is one, it's just never ever going to happen but we need one desktop environment that is just like the default. We can still have all the rest of them, but we have to settle on a consensus that one of them is the one that we should use. Now, it seemed for a while there that GNOME was going to be that des that desktop environment because you know Ubuntu used it, you know Fedora uses it. It's was on the it was on the big distros, but GNOME seems to have, you know is slowly coming to the point where. You know, it's going to uh, maybe die a slow and ho hopefully painful death. The mm -hmm. the the thing is, despite as much as I hate GNOME, it was a good idea to have a default desktop environment that everybody could maybe not agree on, but be okay with the, the fact that it was on the big distros. You know, like this is the one that we have settled on that is, is going to be okay for new users. Okay. We don't have to get rid of the rest of them. Like, everybody's going to say, well, then your all your window managers are going to go away. KD is going to go away. No, 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 no. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that the big distros should get together in a room and collaborate on one desktop environment that they can all agree on that will be their main flavor. They can have the rest of them, and that will still be confusing to some people, but this is the thing that's going to go on the front page of the website that you're going to download and be on your ISO. Uh, and... That's what new users are gonna going to 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 see when they get there, and that's what they're going to learn on and stuff like that. It's going to be fine. Now I understand this is this completely goes against everything that is Linux, right? Yeah. Well, I think you're what you're trying to do is you're trying to make Linux more marketable. Like the thing about Linux is like, look, if you try out Linux and you fucking hate it, like you truly do, and you leave it, you've hurt no one. Like it's fine. Like Linux will continue to be Linux. It's, it's fine. It's unfortunate that you had that experience. The, the, the thing that we need to focus on is when people get there, having a desktop environment that works, that's the problem. We have a lot of them that don't work right now. Gnome is making decisions left and right that are stupid. We have KDE that is breaking itself constantly. Um, and then we've got XFCE that, hey, it's great, but like as long as you like your machine to look like it was straight out of the 90s, which, I mean, yeah, <laughs> you can make XFCE look decent. But Analytic Minded said this is pure fantasy, and it's true. And I don't even know if it's a fantasy that I want to see happen. Like, uh, like it, it sounds like a good idea, and I'm sure there are many reasons to argue against it, and there'd all be valid ideas and valid arguments against it. But Linux has a problem where there are just too many desktop environments out there that you have to choose from, and there's some there's too many distros that you have to choose from too. But I don't think that's a huge problem. That Linus Tech Tips the the first episode. Yeah, I heard dogs. My dog doesn't bark. Okay, this is, he, she's been here for four, for a month. She's never barked be, barked before. Oh, that's must really be something weird. Interesting. <laughs> it must be something weird going on out there. Anyways, um, so sorry about the dogs. Uh, anyways, the 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 thing is, I don't even know where I was talking about. The the, the thing is, is that. When your new user choice isn't necessarily a good thing, right? So there should be a a consensus, not a default, but uh, a, the most popular choice. Like, like, let's just all agree it's Ubuntu with GNOME. Let's just all agree that that's the one that new users should uh, use. I don't think we have to agree. I don't think we have to agree on it. It should just be the known. Ubuntu is kind of the most supported thing. It's kind of what yeah. most people are using. Use that it's one. It's what you... And, yeah, it's and, what you should recommend to people. Yeah, and then once the person knows how to use a package manager and then knows how to use do an update and all that stuff, then they can go through and explore the rest of the Linux ecosystem, which is still going to be there and, and, and be flourishing and stuff, right? It's just a matter of when you're a new user and you seem... I mean, all those logos or whatever that showed up on Linus's screen when he was talking about the distro choice some of those things i never even heard of like i'm a linux mm. user half of those things i don't even know what the hell they are mm. and the thing is that's the thing about distros there's like 400 distros on distro watch and <laughs> which one are you supposed to use you know 
Use Ubuntu. That's the. I guess that's the the point of of, of that one. All right, uh, your next one. Um, my wait. Is this my third point? Yeah, it'll be your third one. You're the last one. Ooh. All right. Um, we have been going my, for an hour and eight minutes already. already. <laughs> <laughs> well, at, at least we. Hopefully, people will enjoy this ex, like extra little bit long podcast. Yeah. Um, but for my last point, I, I think Linux could do a lot better with its um, ability to go back and um, redo itself. Like uh, we've we've talked about this kind of in a roundabout way up until this point, but like, I think a, a thing that Linux struggles with is going back and redoing projects that should be redone. Like pulse audio pulse audio should have been completely scratched and rewritten. Um, hell, uh, it could have been combined with something like, like re scratch also combine also with pulse audio and some, um, you know, new program, new new way of method of doing things um there's a lot of stuff in in linux that could definitely use for an overhaul and a change of um perspective I, the sad thing is i think in linux we we end up have a having a tendency of just as much as people complain about duplication of effort i think we stack on top of effort too much in some areas. Um, I mean, we were talking about Pipewire. Pipewire is just the best example for this. It's built on top of what it's trying to fix. That's how is how is that going to fix anything? Yeah, Literally like just well, patching. It's like it's they're patching the genes. You know, no. <laughs> like like look if you're if you're going to fix the thing and like your fix is brand new and can't actually function yet, that's fine. Keep working on it. Like eventually it will be. Like don't try to make it function and to try and make it function you have to do the bad habits of the other thing like what are you doing like just yeah well then they also i mean especially specifically with the audio stuff they always seem because they decided to stop doing pulse audio and start over i mean start over which they didn't really do that they're building on top of pulse audio but because they decided to do it in this way you're not really getting rid of the bad things, right? You're just covering. Uh, have you ever seen that Adam Sandler movie? I think it's called Big Daddy, where the kid spills mm -hmm. yeah. milk on the floor. Instead of cleaning up, he throws newspaper on top of it. Yep. Uh, that's what this is. <laughs> this, this is the <laughs> Linux equivalent of that, you know? So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, it, it's it's one of those things where that's just the seems to be the way the Linux community likes to do things. Uh, I think it's because everybody has their own ideas of how to do things, but they don't want to necessarily start over, so they patch things. It's like the suckless philosophy. They they created a fantastic window manager, and then they added a whole bunch of patches on top of it. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. and, and I like the patching system, but anybody who's ever used DWM knows that the more patches you get, the more finicky and Sometimes it's it just get. better to go back and rewrite. Yeah, like, you just got to start over again. So, yeah, it's one of those things. Okay. Um, we could probably talk about that for longer, but I think I want to do my no. third one so we can move. We, we, we can. I don't know about you, but uh, I think you've drank plenty of water, and I know I have too. So. <laughs> yes. It's empty. <laughs> I think I need more. <laughs> Anyways, um, so my third one that Linux could do better and this is something that I've talked about on the podcast before, is installation. So, uh, the I, I have always argued this, that the vast majority of people that aren't techies, they don't know how to go through and take an ISO and put it on a USB key in order to actually install Linux. Uh, they don't know how to get past a boot menu. They don't have to enter. They don't even have how to enter a boot menu. And the thing about boot menus, Tyler, and this is the biggest problem with Linux right here, is that you have to get into the boot menu. But in order to get into the boot menu, is a different key on every single computer you'll have ever used. It can be mm -hmm. any of the F keys. It could be the escape yep. key. It could be the tab key. It could be tab. Could N, be F delete. Yeah, it could, could be, be delete. delete. Yeah, it's delete on my computer, right? Mm -hmm. They do a different one on each every one. So you can't do a tutorial and say, hey, this is how you install Linux. Uh, Mudahar just did a video on how to install uh, Ubuntu, right, on his channel. Like, mm -hmm. He has 2 yep, million subscribers. And when he got to the boot thing, well, he was just 
press F10, F12, F11, like, we'll yeah, do one of yeah. those. Just, just, he said, just press all of them. <laughs> like, right. It's the biggest problem with Linux. Nobody knows how to get to a boot menu, and I can't tell you, like, if I had to walk somebody through how to install Linux, I couldn't tell them what button to press in order to get to the boot menu. Like, I couldn't do oh, it. Or, or imagine you have to tell someone disable secure boot in your BIOS. Right, right. Like, like let's not even get into the UEFI stuff. Like, like it, that's that's another problem on top of it. Like, I understand that this is not a Linux problem. Specifically, it's not a Linux problem. It's a, it's a yeah. hardware problem. But it affects Linux in an, in an untold way because it limits the audience of Linux. Because there's the only way, only people that can do this stuff are the people who are technologically sophisticated enough to look that shit up. And mm-hmm. most people are not. You know, that's, they're, they're going to, let's just say, because burning an ISO is actually fairly easy and there's lots of guides on how to do so. They're going to get to that point. They're going to choose their distro. Uh, they've gotten past that that hurdle. They're going to go through and they're going to get Etcher and they're going to go through and uh, install it on a, a USB key. And then they're going to, figure out well how do i get what's next and they're going to google how do i boot from a usb key into linux and the the instructions are going to be whatever key your computer uses to get into the boot menu press that one well that's the most specific piece of garbage you've ever given me in your entire life (laughs) that's it's the dumbest thing and like i said not a linux problem but it is something that every it's a it's a necessary step to installing linux yeah it's it's like a built-in flaw to Linux. Right. That's not that's not even Linux's fault. Right. It it's one of the reasons why hardware that comes with Linux pre-installed is so important, right? Because they don't have if you do that, then you don't have to ex- ever experience that problem. And then you brought up the next problem. Like let, let's just say they managed to mash all the keys on their keyboard and they finally got into the boot menu. They selected the appropriate USB key. And then they realize that you can't boot into that particular ISO because it's not a UEFI ISO. It's a regular ISO. It's for legacy BIOS only. And you have to go back and either reburn it or disable secure boot, which, again, isn't the same on every motherboard. It's different on every single well, one. And then you also have that new user question of like, well, if I'm disabling secure boot, am I making my system I'm like secure. insecure? Am I am I going to get attacked? And right. and. and Add into the fact that most people, when they switch to Linux, are going to want a dual boot. And you it, dual booting on a system that already has Linux or Windows installed is damn near impossible. Because Windows loves to take up the whole hard drive. And even if you've saved a partition for Linux, it doesn't like that very much at all. <laughs> okay, mm-hmm. Because Windows likes to control the bootloader. It, or in it, we use Grub, they use whatever the hell it is Windows uses, yeah. right? And you know, that's added on a whole other thing. It, it adds a, an entire different level of complexity. So installing Linux, and I've argued this until I'm blue in the face, is too hard. And I, the thing is, I'm not smart enough fi- to fix it. Like I don't know that any, I don't think that it can be fixed. Like um, in my mind, in in uh, my fantasy land. Linux does something similar to what Windows does. When you want to reinstall Windows and you're not a techie, what you do is you go into settings and click reinstall Windows. Or if you if there's a new version of Windows, like like when Windows 10 was released, Windows Microsoft came out with a tool that said install Windows. You press the install button while you were in your installation of Windows. It did some stuff and then it rebooted the computer, launched you into the installer and it installed Windows. That's the experience Linux has to have where you're on, I don't know if it's possible, I don't know if it's technologically possible or not, but you're in Windows, you download your distro, it comes up with an application written in whatever, it's going to look like a wizard from 1998, and it's going to say, install Kubuntu. You click the the install thing, you probably have to enter a password of some kind, because of course you do, or hit the authentication pop-up thing that pops up in Windows. Run as administrator. Yeah, like right. Whatever that BS you, is. Like you have to do this. It's going to do some stuff in the background. I don't know what those, that stuff is. It's going to reboot your computer, automatically launch you into the Kubuntu installer. That's how easy Linux should be. I, now, like I said, not sure if it's actually technologically possible, 
I doubt very much that Microsoft and Intel or whatever are going to give that level of, of control over to a random thing that you download off the internet. Yeah. Um, but in a dream world, that's the way it should be. And if the, if we can get to that point, Linux will be... be crazy. I mean, people would install Linux like crazy because it'd be so easy. Yeah. I completely agree with you. I know you do. Now, stop using Windows. What the hell is wrong with you? <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. We have to move on because I have to talk about Crusader for the next 20 minutes. All right. <laughs> All right. So every week, Tyler and I go out and uh, we search for our favorite apps of the week. And we call them apps of the week. We call them picks of the week. We call them various things. Uh, but this is how we end the show. So, Tyler, before I get on to my new love child. Oh, it's so good. Mm-hmm. Crusader is so good, man. What is yours? And I'm, I'm glad you're uh, letting me go first because I'm definitely going to do something um, dirty the, uh, this podcast. I'm going to... Uh, uh, give my app of the week and then I'm going to sprint to the bathroom and use the bathroom because I have drank way too much juice and water <laughs> and <laughs> it's a problem. So uh, for my app or pick of the week, uh, it's Ventoy. Um, I don't know if I've talked about it on the podcast. I know I've talked a, a, about it um, occasionally in live streams and I'm, I'm sure I've mentioned it in a video, um, but it's a fantastic tool for um, trying out new distros, tr- trying out anything um you you can flash it to a um to a usb drive and then you just copy over the isos that you you want over to the drive and that's it you just you can magically boot up from anything like you just i have one 256 gigabyte flash drive right here and this has like this has Windows 11 on it, has a shitload of Linux distros on it, um, like a lot. Um, and yeah, yeah, like I don't, I don't have to do anything. I can take that with me and try out anything. Uh, uh, Ventoy looks really cool. I have not, I've heard of it before, I've never tried it before. So, uh, but that's definitely not something that I definitely need to check out. So, uh, you can run off to the little boys' room now, and I will. Will do. I will talk about my app of the week, which you're missing something really good here, but he does. He, he can't even hear me anymore. All right, so he he's gonna come back 20 minutes from now <laughs> and realize that I'm still talking about uh, Crusader. So I've been looking for the perfect file manager forever. Like for the last two or three years, I've been trying to find one. I thought Nemo was it. Like I thought that Nemo could be was everything that I could possibly want in a GUI file manager. And Nemo is really good. Like, it has dual pane. It's well designed. It has single click to, to open. It's really good. But then I wanted something else. Like, I always want something more. And the thing that I wanted was to have a file manager that would remember my position. Right? And I talked a little, less, a little, about, little bit about Crusader on the podcast that we did before Thanksgiving. And I was still having problems with it then, right? Because I was just learning it. And the thing is about Crusader is that it has that feature where it will go through and allow me to, to uh, close the application and open it back up and it will remember where all the tabs and stuff that I had you know, open when I closed it. And that is amazing, right? It's just so good. And the thing about Crusader, though, that a lot of people aren't going to like is that it is a KDE app, and like all KDE apps, it has a shit ton of dependencies, like all the de- de- dependencies. It, if you want to do batch rename, you have to have something special installed. If you want to have pre like image previews, you have to have a, a dependency installed. If you want to do unzipping and arc- unarchiving and stuff like that, you have to have something installed. And literally, you go right down the line, it has like 30 dependencies that you have to have in order to make it as good as it could possibly be. And that kind of turned me off to begin with. It really did. But after I've used it for a while, oh, man, is it good. Uh, Not only does it remember your position. So, like, when you close it and open it back up, it remembers all your tabs and where you were. It's really good that way. And it does that out of the box. But once you get all the little pieces installed that allow you to do all the stuff. So, it it does image previews really well. If you install console, it has a terminal based in uh, built into it, kind of like Dolphin does. It's really good that way. 
It has a text editor. If you have Kate installed, you can actually edit text documents right inside the, the thing. It's not something I've ever used, but it's, you know, it's there if you want it. But it will also allow you to go through. And there are um, a lot of tools that allow you to do this. But basically, if you want to go through and compare two directories or two drives and then sync them together, like... There, there are tools that allow you to do this, but this is built right into the file manager. So you can go through. I, I went. I have no, when I'm done with the video, and I have all my videos. They are stored on an SSD uh, in my, on my computer, right? And that's where I save them. It's like a 500 gigabyte SSD. But every like once every few months, that thing approaches getting full. So I have to move them to a slower mechanical hard drive. But I, prior to this, I was always just well, you know, I'll just take these one by one and transfer them over the really hard way. Um, because I was too lazy to look up for a tool to do this, but with Crusader, it has the comparison thing. So I compared the mechanical hard drive to the SSD and had it sync the SSD to the mechanical hard drive. So that all, all that stuff was moved over there and then it deleted the stuff on the SSD so that it was the mechanical hard drive had all, had all the stuff. It's amazing. And that's just all built into the file manager and it is so good like literally it's the best app i've ever found on linux it's amazing everybody should use it um but everybody would hate it probably right out of the bat because i guarantee you there's going to be things that don't work like getting to an image preview in crusader is hard because not only do you have to have the certain dependency in order to even enable the damn things but also finding the little arrow key that you have to press and then the button you have to press in order to get the, it actually to appear on, on the screen is kind of a pain in the ass. And I've forgotten how to do it like five times because they bury it like crazy. Why they do that, I don't know. But so there are those little things that are just like Dylan installed this thing this morning <laughs> and uh, I'm sure he doesn't like it. But uh, for me, it was it's just oh man, it is so good. So good. Like literally, this is the reason why. Uh, I this is one just another reason why I can never be you, Tyler, and leave Linux behind. You Microsoft fanboy. I, you. I have not left Linux. That, that's behind. that's not true. You you're you're. I mean, you literally have the Microsoft hat on. Uh, I I <laughs> I have canonical on like on my like laptop. It's I, all right. That's it, bullshit. I don't believe it. Proof. I have. I literally I'll, have I'll, Ubuntu. I'll, all, all I've heard for the whole podcast is, oh, Windows is great. Windows is great. All hail Windows. <laughs> oh, you lucky man. I put I put my backpack in the closet. That's oh, going to make look uh, Yeah. Pr- the, all I hear is words. That's all I hear is words. <laughs> Do I really have to grab my laptop? I don't believe you at all. I don't think you've, I don't think you've touched Linux in the last three weeks. Oh, no. <laughs> He's going to get it. That's funny. <laughs> I just like trolling him. It's so much fun. Okay. Uh, so, um, while he's gone off to do that, uh, I should go ahead and ch- and think. Uh, wait a minute. He's back. Let's see. The, I I don't believe. I don't. I actually don't believe. It. I'm pretty. Sh- he's just gonna. Sh- hold on. Hold on. It's loading up. Uh huh. Uh huh. Sure. It's gonna. All right, so it's, it, this is, I don't know if you can tell, but it says Ubuntu right down there. But hold on, just let me put it in my I'm pretty sure you searched Google Images, and you're just going to show us a series of images oh of God. Ubuntu. Don't don't embarrass yourself like this, man. Come on. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> this is taking an awful long time to load for being <laughs> Linux. Mm-hmm. Sure. Yeah. I don't believe that. Yeah. That looks like a picture from Google Images, all right? <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> Windows trader. <laughs> I'm still using Linux. I, sure, dude, sure. I, I still have OpenBSD on a PC here. Like it. Yeah, um, yeah, that, that counts. Just. Be- <laughs> 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 All right. Before we go, I gotta take a moment to thank my current patrons, which I don't actually. I still haven't set up the damn scene. I gotta do set the scene. So thanks everybody who's a patron. I don't have your names. Uh, memorized. I should have it memorized. I don't. They keep moving around. I do appreciate everybody, but I haven't set up the scene with the with the graphic because I keep forgetting. I didn't even know it wasn't there. 
Like, <laughs> I had no clue. And he even did try and prep. He went through scenes and checked. So he it, truly, it, honestly, it, didn't. Like, remember. it didn't even. It didn't even cross my mind that it wasn't there. Like, like, oh, everything, everything looks fine to me. And then you get to the end of the show, I'm like, where the hell's the Patreon scene? It's not there. Anyways, I guess it doesn't matter. All right. Anyways, thanks to all the patrons. If you would like to support the show. Uh, you can do so at patreon.com slash linuscast. You can also support the show by going to the store link in the bu- in the video description and clicking on that and buying some merch because we have some merch. Soon to have a a some kind of t-shirt that says uh, w- 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 would it, something about workspaces. Right? Uh, yeah, this is your brain on workspaces. Yeah, we, we got to have that t-shirt. Seriously, yeah. I will buy and- that t-shirt. Someone need someone needs to go either on your Discord or my Discord and send us like the best pictures that you can find of Matt making awkward faces oh, and God. we'll blow that up. <laughs> it's not gonna be <laughs> as good as that one of you you playing zero AD that has gone viral. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that is on the back of some some of the designs, so yeah. like you can get merch with that. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so that is it for us this time. Thanks everybody for watching. Coming up next week, would you pay for Linux? Or should you pay for Linux? That'll be coming up next week. Thanks everybody for watching. We'll see you then. <laughs>